Hey everyone, it's Carissa Wiley at sprinkledwithglitter.com. Thanks for joining me today. Today I am super excited because I have some new products from Katherine Pooler Designs to share with you, including four brand new inks, and we're gonna create this easy emboss resist watercolor background using the brand new inks. I'm gonna give you a look at some of the new stuff that I got in hand. And I have stamps, I have dies, but I know you are all waiting for these inks. So these are the four new ink colors. They are in the Apothecary line and they are absolutely beautiful. I'm gonna swatch them out for you real quick so that you can see all of them in action. And I'm starting with the color Lilac. Now, keep in mind, these are a foam ink pad. They are not a felt ink pad like a lot of them on the market are. And these transfer ink really well. And these inks, they're gonna stamp splotchy a little bit at first, but when they dry back, they're gonna dry back really smooth. So you get really great results just with a single stamp right out the gate. Now, if you tune into my channel often, you know that I use these inks quite a bit. And that's because there's a great range of colors, they stamp really beautifully, but they're also great for watercolor techniques as well, which we're going to do today. So that was the crushed violet. Now we're gonna move on to matcha, and I absolutely love this green. It's kind of, I don't even really know how to describe it. It's not a bright in your face green, but it's just a really, well, it's like matcha. <laughs> it's like a earthy, warm green. And finally, whipped honey. Now, I have never had whipped honey, but let me just tell you, that sounds really interesting. We are honey people around here. Does, does whipped honey really exist? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> so there you have the whipped honey. So here's a look at the inks again, along with the swatches after they've kind of dried back. I have the whipped honey, and then the matcha, you can see these are really great smooth stamped results and I only stamped each of these colors once. Now with the foam ink pads, they transfer ink beautifully, especially with the direct to paper. But keep in mind, you may have to re-ink them more often than a felt ink pad. Now I thought I would put together a color combo for today and that's exactly what I did. So I have do, -Si -Do which is one of my favorite Catherine Pooler inks, apricot, eucalyptus and whipped honey as my color combo today and i am going to use this brand new simply diamonds background stamp it is a rubber clean mount stamp so i took out the foam pad in my misty and i put my brutus monroe stick and stamp mat into my misty just to hold my paper in place so that i could stamp this right in the center now i am using a piece of cardstock that is a little bit larger than i need to but I'm okay with that. Um, sometimes I sacrifice a little bit of cardstock or in this case, watercolor paper that I'm actually going to use here <laughs> for a good stamped image and some extra room around the edge to make sure I die cut it well and to make sure I can make it all straight. So I don't like to necessarily keep my cardstock at the same exact size as my stamp because it gives me a little wiggle room to make sure everything's just right. So we're gonna do an emboss resist technique. And so we're starting out with watercolor paper in the Misty. I have prepped it with my Cottontail powder tool from Rabbit Hole Designs. And I'm inking up my stamp with some Versamark ink. And I'm just gonna make sure that I press this really good onto this watercolor cardstock. Now watercolor cardstock has a little bit of texture, so you wanna make sure that your ink pad is really good and juicy. <laughs> and I cannot get this out of the Misty. Finally got it out there. And I wanted to mention that I see a lot of stampers double stamp their Versamark and their WOW embossing ink. And I really do feel like if you're having to double stamp those embossing inks, it's probably time to re-ink your pad. So I've added some white embossing powder over this stamp design, which is very hard for you to see right now, but I can see it in real life. And then I'm going to heat set that embossing powder. And I love that this watercolor cardstock has a little bit of an ivory tone and I have that crisp white embossing powder on top. And you can see I have a really cool design now embossed on this watercolor cardstock. Now, as I was mentioning before, Catherine Pooler inks make for great watercolors. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna use the color combination 
that I showed you earlier. And I am just pouncing my ink pad directly on my glass mat. And I am going to pick up the ink off of this glass mat with a water brush and just fill in small areas of this background. Now the embossing powder lines are going to resist this ink and they're going to actually work kind of as a well or a barrier to keep the color inside of the lines that I want to color because I only want to fill in the small diamond shapes that are in the very center of these patterns. So there's like concentric diamond shapes. <laughs> I guess that's what you call it. And I'm just filling in the very center diamond shape. And I'm using, you saw there, do -si do and then the whipped honey. This is the apricot. And then I am going to move to the eucalyptus and the matcha. So the eucalyptus is the little bit deeper, darker green here. And then the matcha is that really beautiful new ink color. And I did want to mention that Catherine Pooler has lines within her ink collection. So she has like the spa line and the party line. And all of those colors within those collections work really well together. But don't be afraid to mix the collections together, which is exactly what I've done here. So I'm using inks from the spa collection as well as I think the party or I'm not sure. <laughs> But they weren't necessarily designed in the same line, but that doesn't mean you can't use them together. So I'm working through my pattern here, and once I have my watercolor done, I'm going to just take a microfiber cloth, wipe up my surface, and I am going to very quickly heat set this watercolor onto this cardstock so that I don't smudge or mess anything up. I have my wow heat tool on the low setting to do this so that I'm not remelting that embossing powder and I'm making sure that I keep my heat tool moving because like I said, I do not want to remelt that embossing powder. So now I'm gonna grab several of the new stamps, dies, and just kind of mix and match them to create a really simple card. So I have the hello trio die set there which is where that hello sentiment comes from i have the hey 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 sentiment stamp set there which i have a sub sentiment and then i have the every occasion sentiment stamp set which is where this dotted circle comes from and there is a coordinating scallop tag set now everything that i use in today's video tutorial will be linked over at my blog as well as in the YouTube description. So if you're looking for something in particular, be sure you check those places because I will have them all linked there. Now I'm gonna take like this dotted circle design. I'm inking it up with the matcha ink and I'm stamping it onto some white cardstock. And I am going to die cut that out using the coordinating circle that is actually from the Scallop Tag Duo die set, which is also new in the June 2022 release from Catherine Pooler Designs. So you can see I have all of my die cutting ready to go. I'm going to add it to my die cutting sandwich, which if you're curious about my favorite die cutting sandwich for the Gemini Junior, I do have a video about that. I'll put it up in a card here in the upper right hand corner so you can check that out. But I like to use the cutting plates for double sided dies with the clear plastic cutting plate together to create my sandwich and I get really great die cuts with this. So now I've die cut those and I'm taking the Parks and Rec cover die here and I'm gonna die cut it from some vellum. And this makes a really cool background but these also make great strips for stamping sub sentiments on like I'm going to do today. They are a little thicker um, as far as the width of the strip. And so for a little bit bigger sub sentiment like I have from the Hey 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 sentiment stamp set, that this works perfect. And I want to stamp directly in the center of this after I've already die cut it. So I have my Brutus Monroe sticky or stick and stamp mat in my Misty stamping tool. And I do have my foam piece back in this Misty stamping tool. And I'm using that stick and stamp mat to hold my vellum strip in place. And I positioned my sub sentiment here. I'm going to powder up that vellum, ink this up with a little Versamark ink, and then stamp it right into the center of that strip. 
Now this Parks and Rec background cover plate die makes a really cool background. And I know that you're gonna see a ton of really cool inspiration featuring this as a background. But for my card project today, it just seemed like it worked really well as a sentiment strip for this sub sentiment. So once I've stamped that, I'm gonna add my white embossing powder. I'm gonna heat set that with my heat tool. And then I have a great little sub sentiment. Now, this background, this is kind of why I stamped this on a larger piece. I wanna square this up and cut it down just a little bit. So I am taking an essential rectangle die. This is from the Essentials by Ellen Line. And I'm going to die cut this. And that way I get the area that I want. I make sure everything is squared up. And now I have all of my pieces kind of ready to assemble here. Now, when I first die cut that hello um, sentiment there, I die cut it from some watercolor cardstock because I wanted to be able to add some color to it, which you're gonna see me do here. Now, I left this in here because I think it's a great technique, but I didn't love the way it looked on my finished card project. So I'm gonna leave the technique in here and I'm gonna show you what I did to kind of remedy it. So I have my Catherine Pooler do -si do ink. I've smashed it, or not really smashed it. <laughs> I've pressed it on to my glass matte work surface here. I've sprayed it with a little bit of water to get the ink moving. And then I'm using my Misty Sticky Matte to hold my die in place as I press this into the color. Now, the reason I'm using my Misty Sticky Matte is quite frankly, I just don't like ink on my fingers. <laughs> And so this is a way for me to keep my fingers clean and press that die cut directly into the ink. Now I'm going to heat set this really quickly just to get some of that excess water out of the ink. And then I'm gonna go right back down into the ink and press this again and kind of layer up that color for a more intense look. And I'm just gonna keep adding more layers of color and then heat setting that until I get the look that I want. And then I can just use my tweezers to pull this right off of that sticky mat. And if your sticky mat has a little bit of color on it, you can just run it under some warm water to rinse that off. Now to give this a little bit of shadow, I have flipped over this water colored piece that we just created and I'm adding some liquid glue to the back and I have a plain white die cut that I'm gonna layer this on top of and I'm going to slightly offset it so you get kind of that shadow effect. And this is the kind of font that I think could be really fun to offset in several different colors. So like maybe like this pink color and then like a yellow and an orange all together, kind of giving it that really groovy look. Now I've added the sub sentiment to the bottom there that I have heat embossed onto that vellum strip. And I've added some foam adhesive onto the back of my stacked up die cut hello there. And I'm adding it to this circle that I stamped and die cut using that matcha ink. Love that new color so much. That and the whipped honey. For those of you who love yellows, whipped honey is great. It, it's just a really good yellow. It's kind of like, it kind of reminds me, if I were to name it, no, I love the name whipped honey. I would name it whipped honey for sure. But it kind of reminds me of an old color called saffron that I used to use years ago. It's just a beautiful color. Now I'm gonna take this and I trim down that vellum strip into a banner end. I place this onto this little card front that I'm creating. I'm using my T-square ruler to make sure I have that straight. And this is a 12 inch T-square ruler that I have just cut down using an X-Acto knife. And this is where I decided that I really didn't, the watercolor look on the sentiment was not clean enough for me at this point. So I die cut this sentiment again from some salmon cardstock and I just adhered it right over the top of my watercolor piece that I created there. Now we're getting to the end here. I'm just layering this up with a mat of that salmon colored cardstock to bring that all together. It matches the do, -si -do ink in the watercolor form really well. And then I added that entire thing onto a top folding A2 size card base that's made from some linen cardstock using some foam adhesive to give it more dimension because I like big cards and I cannot lie. <laughs> You've heard me say that before. 
Now I felt like there needed one more little accent. So I'm taking this heart that's from the Every Occasion stamp set and I'm stamping it on to some white cardstock and adding some gold embossing powder. And I'm just going to heat set that embossing powder and then I'm going to fussy cut it out and add it to my sentiment here with a little foam adhesive just for a little accent. And I felt like that was the finishing touch that that little grouping needed right there. Now to finish this card off, I'm gonna add a little bit of sparkle and shine and I'm starting with my tonic aqua shimmer pin here and just adding a layer of shimmer over that die cut sentiment. And then I added some Crater Lake sequins from Katherine Pooler just for a little more sparkle and shine because you know me, I, I need the sparkle. It's just, it's all about the sparkle for me. <laughs> so there you have it, a fun, quick and easy emboss resist watercolor background featuring some brand new colors from Katherine Pooler Designs as well as some new products that they've released this month. Be sure to check it out if you're looking for something in particular. Remember, I will have all the products that I use linked over at my blog at sprinkledwithglitter.com. There will be a link to that in the YouTube description below. I will also have links to the featured products used in this project in the YouTube description as well. So be sure you check that out. As always, thanks so much for stopping by. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you were inspired to create something. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications here on my YouTube channel so you don't miss any of my paper crafting and card making video tutorials that I share here. And if you loved this video, I would love it if you would share it with a friend. Thanks again for watching and until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day. Hey, thanks for sticking around to the very end. You know, if you've made it this far, you are one of my favorites. <laughs> to subscribe to my channel, go ahead and click the button on the left side of the screen. And here's a couple more video tutorials I thought you might enjoy.